Well, I'm Artifacts of Mars, and this article is from the Washington Post, which is another extension of the American Communist Party. You can, one way you tell them, it's not, they don't, they don't all use the uh, same font, but if you look at the top of the Washington Post, Washington, the LA Times, and New York Times, they all use this uh, font up here, you see up here, it's like a old English font or something. They're all extensions of the uh, American Communist Party. And local uh, rag here, local fish wrapper, Democrat and Chronicle, is an extension of the New York Communist Party. Anyway, Robert Redford is having a liberal meltdown. Yes, this is the Robert Redford of acting fame. In July of 1972, Sip of Coffee, I was on a train tour through pro Florida promoting the film The Candidate. Entertainment and political press were on board, and I heard they were gossiping about breaking the DNC, community, DNC headquarters at the Watergate Complex in Washington. Story is being covered by two young reporters from the Washington Post, Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein. Reporters were in at the infancy of an investigation that will become known as Watergate, the greatest political scandal in modern American history. Uh, I can think of other scandals, but they didn't. They're bigger, but they just didn't get any coverage, such as. Uh, Hutchinson Wampoa scandal. At any rate, but at the time, there was simply a few small articles about breaking. At the time, as time went on, I became fascinated with the story. It occurred to me it might make a good film. Two hard-working journalists struggling to get the truth. Now we're struggling to bring down Republicans. My first idea was simply to make a movie about two reporters. Uh, Importance of journalism, freedom of the press. It was only later that the depth of the Watergate scandal was discovered. I tried to get in touch with Woodward and Bernstein. It didn't go them well. At first, they refused my calls, fearing that they were being duped by the Nixon administration, some type of setup. No, maybe they just weren't interested in a two bit actor. <sighs> If we finally made contact and eventually made a movie about their story all the president's mind. So year marks the 45th anniversary, anniversary of the Watergate scandal because of my role in the film. Some have asked me about similarities between our situation in 72 and 2017. There are many. The biggest one, and I want you to look at this line in particular. The biggest one is the importance of a free and independent media in defending our democracy. We don't have that. Uh, well, maybe Trump's come loose to some extent, but what we have is an independency, interdependency, which was warned about by Eisenhower. It's called the uh, government media complex, and he warned about it. When President Trump speaks of being in a running war with media, media, calls him among the most dishonest human beings on earth, and tweets that they're enemy, the enemy of the American people, his language takes Nixon's false accusations of shoddy and shabby journalism to new and dangerous heights. Uh, Mr. Redford, sir, what part of that do, do you disagree with? that uh, they are among the most dishonest human beings on Earth. Your average newscast is nothing more than a theatrical presentation passed off as news. Sound accurate journalism defends our democracy. Uh, what sound and honest journalism? Where is it? It's one of the most effective weapons we have to restrain power hungry. I always said that all of President's Men was a violent movie, not shots fired, but words were used as weapons. 
In fact, it's a hard time getting producers interested in... I had a hard time getting producers interested in all the president's men. Newspapers, typing journalism, there's no drama here, so the critique went. I didn't see it that way. To me, it was a story about two journal journalists hell-bent on getting at truth, which means taking down uh, Nixon no matter what. That's the movie, but the real-life Watergate scandal didn't just have two people searching for the truth. It had an entire cast of characters in minor and major roles who followed their consciences. They followed the dictates of the uh, Communist Party. President Richard Nixon's counsel, John Dean, whose testimony blew up in the congressional histories, Attorney General Elliot Richardson and Deputy Attorney General William Ruckelshaus both resigned rather than follow Nixon's demand to fire Special Prosecutor Archibald Cox, and most of all, Congressional Democrats and Republicans. Nixon resigned from office because the Senate Watergate Committee, its Democrat and Republican members, did their job. That's job. It's easy now to think of Watergate as a single event, and it was, and it was a story that unfolded over 26 months and demanded many acts of bravery and honesty by Americans across the political spectrum. The system worked, checks and balances, the Constitution were designed to create functional, what well, was designed to create functional when put to their biggest test. That didn't come out very well. Would they still, which brings me to the other half of the question, what's different now? Much. Our country is divided and we have a tenuous grasp on truth. Yeah, your friends in the media, especially uh, rags like the Washington Post, are the reason why we have a tenuous grasp on the truth. There was a time when, in the period of the national crisis, when politicians from both sides of the aisle put partisan policies aside to uncover the truth. There was a time when Democrats and Republicans united to navigate a peaceful ending to the corrupt and criminal presidency. There was a time when members of Congress placed defending our democracy above party interests for the greater good. There was a time. Now it's different. If we have another Watergate, will we navigate it as well? A statement to me... In May 1973, John Dean dressfully described his efforts to discredit his testimony by discrediting him personally. He said, the truth always emerges. Uh, Mr. Radford, sir, you are a well-known leftist pink of commie. And you're going to be on the case of any Republican that's in there. Uh, Donald Trump is one of a kind. He doesn't really look much like a president, uh, Republican or Democrat. He looks more like an American. Mr. Redford, or whatever your real name is. So, why don't you go stick your head in a barrel of shaving cream? Because I really don't care what you think. Uh, neither do a lot of Americans care what you Hollywood elitists think. I'm Artifacts of Mars. Thanks for watching. Ah. Uh.